for feeding now. It's about right where they are. There he is. That's right. Of course, typical, as soon as we turn off the camera, hit a nice one. That is a really nice blue eel too. Five again. There we go. Got him. This is a nice fish again. Really? Yep. Except those girls are cute. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, the YouTube algorithm has spoken, so I said if you guys enjoyed the shooting videos, I would be doing more of them. Well, my shooting video is by far my most popular video, so we're back at it again today. Uh, today we're gonna be shooting 50 yards, um, so twice as far as I was before, and we've got a little test today. So I picked up these Crossman uh, Premier Copperheads, yeah, I think that's what they are, and against my hollow points. Now the copper ones say that they are 25% more accurate. Uh, they are 14.4 grains and the hollow points are 14.3 grains. So pretty close in weight, but um, it's not just a material to material comparison as we have copper and a round nose versus lead and a hollow point. I'll give you a couple close-ups here of them. There's those round head ones, nice and shiny. And then, whoop, we had a bit of a whoopsie there, but nothing's damaged too much. There is the uh, hollow points. So, now that you all know that I'm a klutz as well, we're gonna shoot a couple of them. We're gonna keep this as scientific as possible. I'm gonna use the magazine. We're, I have multiple magazines, but we're just gonna use the one. Also, I'm gonna adjust you here, so, now you're back to normal and straight, so here we go. Also, I am gonna use the, so the scope cam, so you will have a down, re down range view as well. All right, so first up we have the lead, and we're at 50 yards. I also, I made a scene change. I moved about six feet to the right, try and be able to see my uh, camera and, um, and the target at the same time. Uh, when I put this camera on, the light outside really doesn't like it, uh, and we're on a sunny day here in Iowa. So I moved to the shade, and now I can see everything. So here goes 10 shots. I'm not going to show you all 10 shots with the scope cam uh, unless I'm feeling really confident uh, that I can get it in a short period of time. So here we go. Once again, this is with the lead, so I'm not too worried about where they end up. I'm more worried about the grouping that they have. I don't see a hole, so that's a problem. Oh no, I do. I got a hole low and right. I'm definitely hitting the uh, cardboard, but I don't think I have a direct impact. So I'll find out where I'm shooting and we'll revisit this when I get there. All right, so I think I corrected my mistake. I moved, I did go down and look at it and I was shooting about three inches low and one inch to the right. I don't know why that happened when I zeroed it at without the uh, scope cam, it was shooting dead on. So just an interesting change of impact that I don't know uh, to explain other than either the weight or or something along the lines change the point of impact point of aim on it just a little bit well significantly actually so back to it i will load two more through here to make sure we get an even 10 on target using the same point of aim point of impact and uh here we go so 
So this is shot number one for the lead. Forget to load it? I forgot to load it. <laughs> Lost my zero. There it is. Alright, we're shooting at the left target, so here we go, there's nothing. Well, that moved it just directly to low, so that's unusual. So we're shooting just dead low. Yeah, I got a couple puppies in the background. We'll look at them later. They get more, me more views than uh, than my shooting does anyway. Lost my zero again, but that's okay. I'm sweating today, you guys. It is like 95 degrees here in Iowa and ridiculous amounts of humidity. So, you see my, me wiping my face a lot. It's because it is just toasty, roasty, toasty. All right, here's, I guess that's eight shots. So, um, I think I'm gonna hold that eight. I've got a pretty definitive grouping and We'll say that we throw out two flyers out of the other one, um, and we'll go that route. I think that's a pretty fair way to do it, and I don't think anybody's going to complain too much. All right, so I've loaded up ten of the copper ones, and here we go. So now we're going to be shooting the other target, that being the right target also I'm, while I'm here I'm going to crank up my dial about 13 14 clicks just because I want to keep it uh, up and these are a heavier pellet so Well, that adjustment worked really well. I am just under the bullseye. Just under the bullseye again. And these do seem to be grouping very well. I've got a three shot grouping, two of them are touching. Had that one drop a little low, but I think that was me. Here's shot nine. Here's shot ten. Oh, 
There's your 10 shots. Empty magazine. All right, let's go look at this and uh, kind of compare and contrast what we think we see. Okay, so on the left here, you can see we have our grouping is right here. So that's eight shots right here. These are my first two shots before I adjusted it a little bit. And that's a pretty good grouping, especially through the scope cam. I mean, we're looking at a, we'll flip it over for ease of viewing. There's my finger next to it. I'd call that a inch and a half grouping at 50 yards through the scope cam. Now, a couple things about this. This is not off of a bench, or excuse me, off of a bipod. This is off of a sweatshirt. So uh, my face isn't resting against it and I'm moving around quite a bit. I don't fault the, the gun for performing like this. If we throw the bipod on it, which I might, and, and then shoot again, I think we're gonna see this tighten up to about this. So an inch grouping. Now, the coppers are actually really, really impressive. So that's an inch grouping. There's one off here, so nine of the 10 are here, and we said we'd throw out two of them. So, I mean, you can pick one of your two here, but there it looks to be, so there's five, there's five of them within a quarter inch. So that's pretty impressive uh, at 50 yards, five and a quarter inch. So we throw another 50 yards at it, that'd be five and a half inch out of 10. That's pretty impressive out of a pellet gun. Granted, I don't have 100 yards to shoot here, but if we did, I would absolutely be doing it. Oh, hello. All right, so here's our groupings. So these two I pulled and this one I pulled. So I consistently pulled these outer ones. However, that leaves us seven shots in here. So I think there's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven shots. So grouping size didn't actually change much other than um, if you include the shots I pulled. I'm gonna base that on my error. This grouping took me probably a minute to shoot. This one probably took me about four minutes to shoot. So pretty big difference there. Now. This is actually a more impressive grouping. So I pulled these two shots. However, there's like four or five right here. And then there's the rest of them. So eight and then four is six. So there's four here. So right here is pretty, pretty good. And I'm gonna say that there's not a whole lot of vertical stringing or anything like that. So this is most likely me aiming at the top of the bullseye and letting letting it loose and the bottom of the bullseye. Uh, so that's also user error. And it's the same thing with the other grouping as well. Can I say that there's 25% more accuracy between the two? And the answer is no. Um, I cannot say that. Can I say that there's an indication of it? Yes. Uh, and how can I do that? Well, I can set up the same test again at a closer distance, so something where I'm more comfortable at shooting and being able to tell the difference. So like 35 yards instead of 50 yards or 30 yards. Um, so we half the distance basically and we should be able to see those groups tighten up and if there are flyers then those will become obvious because they'll be out of the single group. Um, also we could get a better shot. <laughs> uh, more on the lines of we could get a better shooting table and I could go off a bipod, which I'm thinking that I might do because these are close enough in, in size groupings that I can't say for sure if, if it's me, if it's my uh, sweatshirt setup for a bench, if, if that's what's using um, the difference in the two for, for the grouping size. I see benefits and negatives to both sides. So we can always remove the human error as well. Um, we could set this thing up in a gun vise and we could shoot it, uh, but that takes the fun out of it. This way we get a little bit of backyard scientist. You get to see me shoot poorly sometimes and pretty well other times. I mean, that's a inch group at 50 yards out of a pellet gun.
inch and a half maybe. That's pretty impressive. Um, actually, all these groups are pretty impressive when you look at them and you say this comes out of a out of a sub three hundred dollar pellet gun. So, um, could it have been better? Absolutely. We should take our time and shoot it again. I'm all for uh, taking a couple more shots. How about you? Honestly, these are a lot of fun. And if I'm going to do a proper outro, you guys should at least see my face. So, bear with me here on this camera work, but. There we go. Is that, a, is that a good position? Anyways, I had a lot of fun making this video. I shot a bunch. Um, I hit some targets. I missed some targets. We went through a couple of trials and tribulations of, of moving zeros and such. But at the end of the day, what we had was we had a pellet gun that's shooting an inch to an inch and a half group at 50 yards. Uh, depending on uh, your shooter, it probably would be an inch. Um, if I took my time and was taking every shot with 10, 15 seconds between each one, um, it would probably be an inch gun at 50 yards every time. Uh, we were moving a little fast, so we probably ended up in that inch and a half range. At hunting ranges, I know we're not supposed to talk about that on YouTube, but that's what this is. This is a little varmint gun. An inch to an inch and a half at 50 yards is plenty acceptable for squirrels, rabbits, and um, anything else that, that happens to bother you. Uh, that's probably less than 20 pounds. So, as a plinker, does it do what it's supposed to? As a plinker, heck yes. It's got 30 foot-pounds of energy, about, and it's slinging them at an inch to an inch and a half. So, is it a gun that, that a, a little kid or, or a novice could pick up and shoot well with at 20 to 25 yards? Yes, they could shoot excellently at 20 to 25 yards and stretch it out to 50 yards and still shoot pretty well. So I think it's a great little gun. It's actually not that little, it's pretty big, but it's a great little gun to start people off on. Um, does it have the best trigger? No. Does it have the best barrel? No. And why is that? Because it's not a it's not a thousand dollar PCP. It's it's an entry level PCP that you can throw a thirty dollar scope on. Um, I have a nicer scope on it so that you guys can see uh, can see how it actually looks. Uh, but you can throw, you know, like a $30 UTC scope on it and it'll perform just fine um, because it just shoots. Uh, it's easy to pump up as well. You don't have to pump it up to 3,000 PSI and get a lot of shots out of it. You can pump it up to 2,000 PSI and probably get 30 consistent shots out of it, 30 to 40 consistent shots out of it. Uh, I pump it up to about 2,500, 2,600 and I'm getting 50 consistent shots. That's what I shot today and you can see that they're all pretty consistent. We're not seeing any drop-offs yet. So expect to get 60 shots out of 3,050 out of 25 to 2,700 PSI. And basically, I'm trying to sell you an Umarex gauntlet at the end of the day. It's, it's got a lot of features packed into it. And as a starting package, you can't do much better for under 300 bucks. There's the Crossman, um, Crossman Benjamin Discovery which is running a 270 and it does it has a smaller air reservoir it does have a wood stock for you wood stock people out there that's probably a big selling point but uh, it has a, basically a weatherproof stock and it doesn't look nearly as pretty as that discovery but i think they're trying to discover my secrets everybody uh, there's a plane going over right now It's just a great starting little little pellet gun because you can have a lot of fun with it, you get a lot of shots, and it puts them down range pretty good. So with that, thank you very much for watching this and hopefully you come back for more. Hi you little goofballs. Hi. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we just love to be petted. Yes, we do. We just need all the attention in the world. Yeah, puppies for views. Yeah, yeah, yeah.